simulating impedance and LT splice. Impedance is a way to use Ohm's law with energy storage elements. All real circuit elements have a real and an imaginary part because all resistors have some parasitic, in other words, unwanted capacitance and inductance. All capacitors have some resistance and inductance. And all inductors have some resistance and capacitance. How much um, parasitic resistance, capacitance, inductance a passive device has can be found in the data sheet for when you go to buy them. The, um, they're not, it's not given in um, capacitance or, or farads or henrys. It's, it's given in terms of impedance. Impedance is made up of a real and an imaginary part. And luckily for low frequencies, we can treat resistors, capacitors, and inductors as ideal. So the ideal impedance for passive devices with S equaling J omega equals 2 pi F. For the resistor, impedance is R because there is no frequency dependence for a, resist a pure resistor. For a pure inductor, the impedance is J S L and that's a typo it should just be SL and for the capacitor it's ZL 1 over SC so we can use LT spice to measure the impedance of the resistor even though it should just be the resistor and so at 60 Hertz and this is a way to run a simulation just at a particular frequency AC list 60 60 Hertz being a common uh, frequency. We have the voltage, we have the magnitude of the current, and it's zero and zero phase, and the current of the voltage source is of course 180 degrees out of phase because that's the definition of a power source. So the impedance of the resistor equals R equals V divided by R, uh, I, and it's one with a phase of zero and divided by one milliamp with a phase of zero equals one kilo ohm with a phase of zero. Now we can do this with a capacitor where the magnitude is still one but the magnitude of the current is 0.3769 milliamps with a phase of 90 and so if we plug this into our impedance equation, we just put one with a phase of zero, one volt, divided by the current with a phase of 90, and we get 2,652 ohms with a phase of minus 90. Because when you divide with phasor notation, you subtract the top phase, uh, you subtract the bottom phase from the top phase. We can do this for an inductor as well. And in this case, the magnitude is 2.65 amps divided into the 1 volt. Now, something to point out that this is very close to 90 degrees of phase. And the reason why it's not is that uh, LT spice adds conductances that you don't see um, that alter the phase somewhat we can just round that to 90. Well, when we divide the, the voltage by the current, we get 0.3769 ohms with plus 90 degrees phase. Now we can also use it to find the equivalent uh, impedance, or another way uh, to look at it is the, the C equivalent. So here we have two series resistors and they add in parallel and so the impedance of that capacitor should be 1 divided by J 2 pi F the effective capacitance again it's V divided by I and since the current is the same through each one of those capacitors we only need to use one and in this case we get 5,305 with a phase ohms with a phase of 90 degrees meaning that the effective capacitance went down so the impedance went up 
can even do it for the inductor where these should add in series and so we just divide the current into the voltage and we get 0.75 with a phase angle of 90 and you can see that in this case the impedance went up compared to the inductor impedance and same thing with the capacitor as the impedance went up when we added them that way. So we can also combine passive elements into a Z equivalent. We could never find, we could used to be able to find R equivalent, C equivalent, and L equivalent, but if we added, if we had them in a circuit, we had no way of adding them together. Well, we can do that with impedance. And in this case, they're in parallel, this R1 and C1. And so we just use the parallel combination that we used to use for resistors, except now we use it for impedance. And we just plug us into our equation here. And we get what looks to be like a transfer function. And so when the frequency is 0, we simply get 1 kilo ohm with a phase of 0. And when the frequency is infinite, it drives this to 0. And it's not just 0. It's There is an imaginary part here. And so eventually it goes to minus 90 degrees phase.